Well, good evening, everybody. It is Brad and Krista with the Big Family Homestead, and I hope you are prepared mentally, physically, and emotionally for another exciting, it's soon to be classic, emotionally. <laughs> that one threw me. <laughs> yeah, we've got we got a lot we've got a lot planned, guys. We want to talk about making money from your homestead, your farmstead, and heck. Actually, wherever you're at, I mean, I started thinking about it, and the stuff we're talking about today... A lot of it can be done in urban areas. An apartment? Yep. A, you know, if you lived in a a box, maybe not so much. A yurt? A yurt? You could you could rock mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff in a yurt. Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 Turn so, off the music. Oh, yeah. Good call, Mama. There we go. Good. <laughs> All right. Well, you say funny. hi to some folks while, All we, right, while we get this act uh, going. Uh, Bandana Grandma here is here. I hope she is feeling better. Adela's mom, North Star Prepper, uh, NYC Homesteader, Michelle Connolly, Alicia, thinking of others, sorry, not others, thinking of others. Or Druthers. There you go. The Pirate and the Lumberjack. I love that name. I think it's fantastic. Uh, the Adaptive Maritimer, Hedge Apple Acres, Carol's Cottage, Nebo Allen. My hair is not thick, actually. She says she loves my thick hair. It's it looks really, it looks really it, good. It's though. really thin, actually. So, I, I gotta say, it looks good. You. And she was gushing. I was not. You were I gushing. was shocked. I'm like, my hair looks good she's today. She's like, because I'm setting the camera up, and she's like looking at I'm herself. Like, oh, it looks so nice. Anyway. Yeah. Thanks, hon. Appreciate that. My face is probably bright red now. It looks beautiful, baby. Oh, come on, sister. Horsey noise, right? <laughs> What's with okay. the horse, you know? Okay, okay, okay. Life in the UP, Phoebe is here, and she has always got some super funny comments. Yeah, you gotta watch Phoebe's comments, because she's a little sassy. She is sassy. We love it. Yeah. Uh, Watkins family is here, Bev Cramp. Cramp? Crump? There's a Cromp, maybe? I think it's Cromp. Hmm. Anyway. Anyway. Welcome to Roy. everybody. Roy! Roy! And Roy! Shelly! They're here tonight. We have got a story to tell you about Roy and Shelly. It actually might take like two or three minutes, but it's funny and it's awesome. It's hysterical. But we will save that save for a little for later. bit. So once again, just to recap, yeah. we're going to be talking about different ways you can make money from pretty much where you're at. Yep. But our focus is, is through the homesteading because we have access to a lot of resources mm -hmm. and, um, well different ways of doing things because we've learned how to do a lot of skills just by YouTube Spend. University. Yeah, and yeah, and doing them. Yeah. Learning from other people, finding folks that know what the what in the Como Sayama they're doing, you know? What? I think it's just the I thought you were gonna say something else. Never mind. Never mind. Wow. I thought this was a family show. That's why I didn't say anything. Family show, family show. So, oh, my hair looks great, too. Thanks, Alicia. Under his hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys all had an amazing and hopefully um, deeply meaningful Easter. Mm -hmm. Yep. We had a great day yesterday. We did. It was really, really nice. I got to play guitar in the praise band. In all three services. Yeah. So. And it's funny because, you know, I used to do that for, like, a living yeah. ever since high school. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's a different thing when you're not like the leader, where you're the guy that shows up and I just get to play, and then I don't really have any responsibility other than just don't mess up. Right. And right. so it's really it's it's um, put the fun back in it rather than um, the pressure because mm -hmm. you don't want to mess up. Right. So, but that's been awesome. And then yesterday we also we had a great meal. Jonathan mm -hmm. came over. Yep. Yeah, uh, and then we got to go on a little ride. We did. We went. I forgot what we what we did yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. We went on a little ATV ride. Um, almost got stuck in some snow. It was pretty dicey. Yeah, we were going up a trail, and it started out where there was just a little bit of snow, and then and it then got to mud. Be mud. Yeah, it was. It was crazy. But you know, one thing that I was really disappointed about was oh. the trees. Yeah, they, they harvested. They logged this huge area that was probably 50, 60 acres. Maybe more. And it was just, it just, looked like it was a decimated. hurricane had come through. Yeah. Or a tornado. It just was really sad. Well, and, and that's the thing. Um, 
there's different ways that different logging companies do mm -hmm. their harvesting. And sometimes the deal that they strike is just to come in and clear cut everything, but then they don't really clean anything up. No, they there's leave like, all the debris. You know, you know, just shattered tree stuff at the bottom because the machines that come in there are monstrous. Right. They leave all of the limbs. Uh, they leave stumps that are a foot tall. Mm -hmm. You know, they it's it really bugs me. You know, I know that the the Department of um, uh, what do they call it? Natural Resources. Yeah, the DNR. That's yeah. right. They um. I know they're involved when, whenever any of that's done, and they do that to keep the forest growing. It's just discouraging when it was, like, beautiful and awesome, you know, just six months ago. And then you get out there, and it looks like a bomb was dropped in a field. Yeah, it really does. It really does. It was really sad. So, but I know that that's, they're, they know what's going on, and so I'm, I'm trusting that they're doing the right thing for the public land. Let's hope. So, um, let's see. How do we want to start? I think we need to start with a joke. Go for it. There is a, a, a friend of the channel and a friend of mine. His name is Mike DeFazio. And, and uh, he has to say his name that way every I, time. I actually have no idea why. Yeah. It doesn't make any logical sense to say his name like that. No. I have something in my eye. Clearly. <laughs> need a moment, sister? No, go ahead. Or maybe like a spoon or something? <laughs> What are you doing? Right here. <laughs> She's <sitting> here. Uh, <laughs> That's like something I'd do. It's like, what are you doing? Tell your joke. Jeez. It's not my joke. It's Mike DeFazio's joke. You're fine. Tell his joke. I had not heard this one. And it's funny because I've been in the church forever, right? And so he's like, I bet you've heard this joke before. And, uh, and I, I just lay it on me kind of thing. And he said, okay, Pontius Pilate talking to Joseph of Arimathea. And he says, hey, Joseph, why would you give your tomb to this Jesus guy? He's a poor nobody. And, you know, you're, you're wealthy. You, this tomb is worth a lot of money. You know, why, why, what, what, what were you thinking, man? He goes, it's okay. I'm only going to give it to him, loan it to him for the weekend. So, ah, da don't don't Yeah, yeah. That's really funny. So Mike DeFazio... We salute you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thanks, Phoebe. I've got a beam in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Plank eye. All right. Yeah. So we got to tell you about what happened with um, Roy and Shelley. Yeah. Because you want to tell the pre-story? I'll tell the pre-story. I'll tell the pre-story. And then up until I called. Right. Right. Okay. Go ahead. So, you know, somebody's birthday is coming up uh, shortly. And so I wanted to find something that he could really, you know, use and not just some bobble that sits on his shelf and collects dust. I wanted to give him something useful. So I texted Roy, or I texted Shelly. And, uh, they're friends of ours. They're friends of ours. Um, I, <laughs> I said, okay, can you pick Roy's brain? Because I want to be able to give Brad a... Uh, you got to say it. A holster. Because he manages a... He manages a gun store. A gun store. Right. And I, and I know he knows way more about this stuff than we do. And I wanted to make sure we got the right one. So I, I messaged them. I said, okay, can you pick his brain? I want to get a holster. I want to get the right one that's going to fit. Yada, yada. Because I have one and I hate it. He hates it. And, and he can't take it off of his pants very easily. It's a pain. Yes. So she knew that I wanted one. I knew that because I, well, what reminded me is I was trying to take his holster off of his pants yesterday because he got mud all over his pants. When we were ATVing. Right. And so it was just ridiculous. Anyway, so I messaged them, got this all arranged where he was going to drive it over here today. Who drives it over? What like, what just, gun store do you know? It. What gun store do you know has like personal delivery service? Right, concierge. He just, I need to get some nine mil if you don't mind. <laughs> he just happened to have the day off. Well, and so he's going to spend his day and drive it over here, and you know, so unbeknownst, unbeknownst to, to me, to him, this was a complete. Well, and you remember this morning, mm -hmm. he had this wild bird. He wants to go to okay. Wausau. I'm like, are you sure? Can we wait until tomorrow? That's I have a lot of schoolwork to do. Okay, so <laughs> we now, have a now lot my part. to do. So 
I am. I'm thinking about our friends Roy and Shelley, and I'm like, you know what? We just got to get together with them because they don't live nearby. No, um, they live two hours away. And and I just thought, well, you know what? It's our turn to go on over there. They came here last time, and I wanted to just get something on the schedule, right? So I'm literally on the phone calling Roy. And she's over in the corner going, what are you doing? And I was like, who are you talking to? Now you got to tell that you had and been. And so I had been messaging Roy, finding out when he was coming, because he wanted to go to Wausau. <laughs> so I told Roy that. Well, Roy comes up with this elaborate story that he has to drive on to the Appleton. Moment. Oh, totally on the moment, on the fly. He has to go to Appleton to talk to somebody at the other, you know, gun store and... I'm like, well, cool. Well, let's go. Let's Why don't you come lunch? have lunch with us? Yeah, let's stop and ha you know, stop and have lunch with us. And and so I am completely <laughs> clueless at this point of what's mm -hmm. going on. Yeah, it's all going on behind my back. And then um, we're done eating, and he said, "Well, yeah, I, I, I got a call, and actually the business portion of my day is over." And right. I said, "Well, why why don't you come on over to our house? We wanted to give you some eggs. Is it on the way back home?" And he's like, yeah, it's on the way back I home. Know, yeah. yeah. And I wanted him to try out a piece of meat that we had off of this one cow that we mm -hmm. had butchered. It's and, his wife's favorite. And it's his wife's favorite. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, you got to take one. You got to take mm -hmm. one. And so he comes back, and we're unloading groceries from Aldi. <laughs> and then he like goes, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and he goes, happy birthday. <laughs> and I'm like, like, yes. What? And he says, it's from your wife. And yeah. So we had arranged all of this, and then we, you know, told him that, well, you know, the whole Appleton thing was just a total fabrication. I'm like, how did you know? Oh, oh! <laughs> I was totally bamboozled. It was great. It was great. So I know that now I can pull one over on Brett. It was <laughs> it funny. It doesn't happen very often. But Roy, what a slick dude! He yeah. was on Johnny on the spot. Yeah. He just picked it up, not a problem. Mm -hmm. But this. Uh, if you fantastic. are concealed carry holders, which we both are, mm -hmm. this is fantastic. And I wanted to show you because all of the other gun holsters that I've ever had have stunk. They dig into your side or they're awkward when you sit down. Um, and this one, love it. It's like black point. But um, if you are a concealed carry holder, there's a link down below. I am happy with this. And, and yeah, it's not the cheapest holster but no wow but it's, it's worth nice it. it's worth it and it has a lifetime warranty if anything breaks on it they'll replace it and i'll be the guy that'll test that warranty yeah you were yeah but yeah. while we were at home because he came on home and this was the funniest thing and this is why we have a salute you moment to shelly and it's coming up here in a second uh but as <laughs> she's texting him asking him where he is are you on are you home yet Oh my gosh. And we're two hours away from them. Yeah. And he takes a picture like a selfie. I'm in the back like, oh, right, you know, <laughs> so she'll know what, where we we're at. Yeah. And then he says something like, not yet or almost or yes? something like, yes. Question mark, yeah. Right. And, then, and then she starts getting on him because she said, don't they have a live stream? You better not be keeping him, <laughs> them, from right. preparing for their live stream. Right. And so... This is a salute you moment to Roy and Shelly, but you need to know something about Roy. He is enamored with his wife. Oh my goodness, yes. I would use the word smitten. Wait, what? what's his term for her in his phone? Oh, I don't know if we're allowed to do that. Okay, okay Roy, can we say no, it? No, can we say don't it? do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. So, but anyway, this is the salute to Shelly and Roy. Roy is smitten with his bride, and I think it's awesome and, yeah. and awesome. Yeah. Roy and Shelly, you guys salute rock. You. They are amazing. They are an amazing couple. They yep. really are. Yep. So... So, anyhow. Can't wait to see them. See, well, see her again. I got to see Roy all afternoon. I'd like to see Shelly. Yeah. You know, not that Roy's bad, but, oh, yes, we can say it. <laughs> His nickname for her is The Hotness. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely hotness. love it. <laughs> and, and he says that if he makes her giggle at least once a day, he's winning. <laughs>
Well, then so, you'd be you'd be the the silly, goofiest, happiest, nuttiest person in the nut house around here because you can't stop laughing. Well, I mean, there you go, <laughs> there you go. Oh, so, all right, so. let's get to um, some of the uh, money making ideas. But real quick, I know there's a lot of you guys out there. I'm seeing the names that are friends of ours and are Thrive Life customers. Tomorrow is the day for consultants. Tell starts, them about it. it. The sale starts tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Mountain Time. That's important. That's a, a very important piece to this. Um, and then for everybody else who is a customer, uh, the sale starts on April 24th, which is tomorrow's day Tuesday, tomorrow. Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. I just I'm trying to remember. I didn't, couldn't remember what day it was. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, 9 a.m. Mountain Time on Wednesday, the sale starts for everybody, everybody else. Uh, and then it goes through the end of the day on April 29th, which is that Saturday? Say Saturday. I believe in you, baby. Okay. I believe. I believe I can fly. I believe. No, that's Monday, not Saturday. There you go. Yeah. So. Monday night is when the sale ends at uh, 11.59. Right. Mountain time. So, so Bandana Grandma, <laughs> I'm going to have to virtually wrestle you, arm wrestle you right now. Bam. <laughs> that is not nice. That's really funny. Malcolm says, I live in an open, concealed carry state. Open, concealed? What does that mean? Because that's kind of a contradiction, isn't it? That is a, that's a, a double negative. Maybe, yeah, a double negative. <laughs> and, you know, those double negatives, they equal a positive. Uh, not all the time. Oh, no, they do. No, not oh, all they the do. time. No, oh, no, they no. do. No. Yeah? Only in yes. math. Yes, in math. In math. <laughs> not meth. You don't want to get in math. Meth is bad. Math good, <laughs> meth bad. Right, right. So, but I, I, I don't understand. Maybe he's saying an open carry state, because a lot of states are open carry. You can open carry um, if you you're a certain age. You can open carry a lot of places. In yeah. Wisconsin, you can, but yeah. you have to be... 18? I think it's 18. I think it's 18. Roy told us to, and I, know, I forgot. We keep forgetting, because we had a police officer tell us that it wasn't until 21 that you could open carry. Yeah. And uh, open carry, Donna, is where your gun is on the outside visible. of your... It's visible, where you can see it. And a lot of states are like that. So, like, if you if you went to Walmart, for example, and somebody who's not a police officer is wearing a gun on their side, that's considered open carrying. Right. That anybody can see it. Um, but you have to take, in, in most states, you have to take a, uh, a class and get a permit to do what's called concealed carry. Right. Meaning, it could be under my shirt, it could mm -hmm. be in my pants, it could be in my coat. And you don't know that it's there. It's right. not visible to everybody else. And there's a lot of rules that go along with it. And, and um, I don't, I personally have a, a kind of a weird issue with it because I think by the Constitution of the United States of America, we shouldn't have to have a permit for that at all. No. But we abide by the law. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we went through the classes and we are proficient. And mm -hmm. that's how that goes. Yeah. So. Anyway, let's talk about how to make the moolah, baby. The moolah. With your homestead, <laughs> your apartment, your farm, your mini farm, let's start with some obviously easy things. Let's start with, um, well, one we do, soap. Okay. That, is that an easy one? Because I would think this would be an even easier one. We'll we'll talk about okay. that. Okay. Let's let's talk about that because she was going to talk about eggs and chickens, mm -hmm. and I was going to suggest soap making. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at the initial startup costs. If you were going to start making soap from scratch, there's a few things that you need. Right, you need to have uh, you need to have lye, and you need to have oils. Um, uh, we make a goat milk soap, so we have we use goat's milk for that. Um, so we have lye oils goat's milk and some other you know beneficial you know oils moisturizing oils not just uh coconut oil but um some other little ones vitamin e that kind of thing and then there's a scent 
You know, do you want to have a scent? Do you not want to have a scent? You don't have to, yeah. You don't have to, then, you know, a lot of people use dyes. We don't do that. I don't like to have dyes in my soap because I don't... I, less chemicals, it, better. Exactly. Less chemicals, the better. Um, for us, anyway. I just... I, I would hate... I don't... I don't... Our soap is gentle enough to use on an infant. Mm -hmm. I have used our soap since Ruth was a baby, um, and it has never been an issue. I know lots of people who have made or who have gotten our soap, and they use it on their eczema, and they have great results with it. Sure. Um, any, kid, any person who has um, any kind of uh, scent, or fragrance allergy, or skin allergy. Sensitivity. Sensitivity, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, they get the plain soap, and they absolutely love how gentle it is on their skin. And it still cleans them. So, um, but that, yeah, that's those are some startup costs. And that, that startup cost can can be costly. I mean, you know, it depends I on how so. many bars of soap you're going to make. Um, well, let's talk about what we do, like in terms of our equipment. Right. The equipment you have to have a special uh, um, bowls that you or pots that you uh, don't use for anything else because right. they can have lye in them. Right, and they have to be stainless steel. And what I recommend can't be tin. is get the cheap stainless steel ones from Walmart. So you're talking ten bucks for a you're, pot. You're talking ten dollars for a pot have specific spoons that are only used for the lye. Um, you know, you want to have utensil specific for soap making. Um, but once you buy that, you don't have to buy it ever again unless something weird happens. But um, one quick question. This should be an easy one. I'd like to try it, Mary says. Can I wash my poodle with it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, there was a time when I act I used <coughs> it for my hair. Yeah, Caleb still does. I, I use mm -hmm. it for my. And what's funny about that is when the Star Wars movie, the last one came out, Caleb's all into Star Wars, mm -hmm. and and we got him like it, it's called Wookie Wash. Yeah. And yeah. it's like it's uh it's it's shampoo. Yeah. But he doesn't use it. He uses the hand soap that we we use, and his hair's fine. It's right. not it's not dried out or anything weird like that. Uh, but to answer your question, so. Moving on okay. to... Quick question, though. Alicia was concerned about the lie. And and um, Phoebe answered her question. That is correct. Mm -hmm. um, the lie is only a problem in the beginning part. Yep. Once the soap has cured after a couple anymore. of weeks, it's n the chemical composition has changed yep. to where it is not a problem anymore. Um, and, and, you know, the, the common misconception is, oh, well, I can just make glycerin soap. Well, no, that's not really the case because glycerin soap is still made with lye. You cannot have soap itself without lye. Or, or soda ash soda or ash, the yeah. sodium hydroxide is the right. chemical name for it. But you have to have that chemical, that yeah, chemical compound yeah, it has to, to react. create soap. But once it cures, it's fine. You know, I... Once it hardens, um, I can take it out. I can touch it. It doesn't hurt me in any way. I can cut the bars, you know, separate them out. Mm -hmm. It's still fine, but I still don't use it to wash until a month later. I let, let right, it cure you let for it three go. to four weeks. So Yeah. And yeah. so, all right, continuing on with the cost of getting started. Mm -hmm. You're going to want some spoons. You're going to want make sure that you're not using anything aluminum or anything weird like right, that. It needs right. to be wood. Wood would... Wood. Yeah, wood, Bamboo, stainless steel fine. is definitely the best. And yeah, yeah and a then, well ventilated area. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were as somebody was asking, thinking of others, can you make soap in the basement? Only if it is extremely well ventilated. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so then other things you're gonna need, uh, whatever kind of soap you're gonna decide to make, you need fats and you need the lye. Right. You know, or that other compound. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can make any combination that you want. We use a combination of a bunch of different oils, a lot of coconut oil, mm -hmm. almond oil. We use all kinds of different Vitamin things e. that are really good for your skin. Right. And um, it's, it's very basic stuff. And then we add goat's milk in there just because it's really good for the skin. And it, it's got a soothing quality, if that makes any sense. Right, right. Um, and you can you can just use if you want to make super basic soap, 
you can use lard and lye. Which would be weird. Which would be strange. But it would make soap. But it makes soap. Um, you can use coconut oil and lye. Of course, you need water to, to start off with, but that's a you know, whole other long entailed thing. But, you know, you can make super basic soap. We make our soap specific because that's um we whittled the, the recipe to where we want it we really like this uh this composition of the soap it's really really good for your skin right so. and so i would say all in all if you got some lye and you went and bought some you know vegetable oil and coconut oil and maybe some almond oil and you got some scents to make like 30 bars of soap. I'd say you'd probably, with buying pots and everything, you'd probably have 50, maybe. 75 bucks invested yeah. in it yeah. for the first time. For the first time, yeah. Then your cost does come back out a little bit more. And when we sell our bars of soap, just so you know, we're not making a ton of money. No. It's, it's, it's because, you know, you sell one bar of soap and you, you got to figure out your cost and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's somewhere around a dollar that we mm -hmm. make, mm -hmm. you know, after shipping and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so for us, it's worth it, you know, because we have, you guys are so generous and you come and buy our soap. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and um, so that, that's, that's one way. Soap making, like if you're at like 75 bucks to start making 30 bars of soap and you can sell it for 30 bars, well, shoot, you're only two runs away from making a profit, right? Right. 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 Mm -hmm. And so, where can you sell that soap? Let's say you don't. You're sitting there going, Brad, you have a YouTube channel. Sure, it's easy for you. Well, what about flea markets? Flea, no, flea markets, farmers markets, garage yeah, sales, garage sales, exactly. Um, craft shows. There's all kinds of craft shows going on. Early spring, fall time. You know, lots of folks go to these craft shows to buy gifts for family, and that's a great place to sell those. Um, I'm seeing Tina Weber is making me feel really good over there. Your soap is amazing. It's the only one my hubby will use anymore. Oh, I'm so glad. That makes me really feel, that makes me feel good. Um, yeah. So Roy asked if we make it from tallow, and I have never used tallow. Um, we actually tried to render tallow many years ago to make candles, right? We did it wrong. It was so gross, and I we, probably will never we, do it again. <laughs> we, okay, we did not know what we were doing, in fairness. Yeah. We did not know what we were doing, and we are trying something new, which right. is good to try something new. Yeah. However, um, we were doing it way too hot, way too fast, mm -hmm. and it, I don't want to describe the smell, because it was disgusting. It was gross. And it stayed in the house for mm -hmm. days. Yeah, it was really gross. But... I think that we would be able to do it better now that we know how to do render lard mm -hmm. because rendering lard is like falling off easy. a log mm -hmm. and nothing Super to easy. it. Right, right, right. Um, so I know Roy had said something about he makes his soap molds uh, with um, wood. Well, I went to the Dollar Tree and I got their plastic... Like their uh, silverware, utensil, the utensil holders. You know, the drawer organizer things. They're about yay big, and I get 10 bars out of it. Um, and I cut them about an inch thick, and it, they were a dollar. So I, I, every time I go, I get a few more, and I've actually yeah. got onions growing in some of them. <laughs> Phoebe's asking, how do you figure out the math for what to charge? Well, that's pretty easy. You basically add everything up. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, I used a quarter a bottle of this vegetable oil. I used a half a tub of this coconut oil, and I used this. As a, you just figure it out. You know, yeah. do the math. Okay, it cost me X amount. Then you divide it out by your bars, mm -hmm. like how many bars you made. Yep. And that's, that's really it. But yeah. now the real trick is if you're going to mail it to people, uh, then, then you have to be very conscious of how much the, the packaging is going to cost. Mm -hmm. The label, how much the shipping is going to cost. Um, but we actually really try to do something extra with the, the way that the soap looks to me is very important. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that our soap can look and s sit right next to those soaps that they sell in the rich cities, the hoity-toity places for eight bucks, nine bucks for yeah. a bar. And ours looks just as good, if not better. Mm -hmm. And we've got nice cloth wrapping and it's all the cool edge cut mm -hmm. and the twine. But honestly, that stuff, it doesn't add much more to the cost, but it adds to the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
it adds to the time because we all, the whole family, will sit and cut and we'll do our things. And and um, you got to figure in the time. That's really where I was going with that. So when mama makes soap, if I'm helping her, we can do it twice as fast. Yes. I'm like the sous chef. Right. He measures out all the oils <clears throat> and then I mix them all together. I'm the chemist. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, mad scientist. Right, mad, totally mad science, scientist. But yeah, um, uh, he'll get all of the oils all and all of the ingredients set out for me, and then I just get it get it done. And it, it goes ten times faster. When I have to do it by myself, it takes me about an hour per batch. Right. So. Um, but then when I'm helping, mm -hmm. twice goes, as fast. Goes super fast, yeah. Um, and to answer a question, Steve is, uh, is asking, do you need a business license? And uh, the comment got away from here. But it's uh, he's asking, do you have to be set up with insurance and stuff? It depends on the state you're in. Yeah, it, it depends on your area. It's all on the area that you're in. Yeah. You don't have to have a business license to do that. You can do it as your yourself. You can say, I am Brad and I am selling soap. Right. They just want to know who it's going to. Mm -hmm. Like, if all of a sudden you put something out and hurt somebody, they right. want to know who they're going to come who after. They're going to come after, yeah. Yeah, it's just um, you need to check your county. Um, and I know you have, there's a lot of farmers markets are out there. They have a lot of super strict regulations. Like, you can't, you can't bring in somebody else's stuff to sell, you can only sell the stuff you made or you grew. Um, but that's, but that, again, that's, on that's area. county specific. So you would have to look for your area. Yeah. And, um, so, but anyway, all in all soap making went at the end of the day, cause we have to, you have to figure in your time mm -hmm. because if you, if she spends an hour making say 30 bars, mm -hmm. well then you got to divide that out. Okay. It took me an hour. What's my time worth? Right. If you're saying my time is worth $20 an hour, well then you're going to have to figure out. Is this a good? Is this a good? Is it a good Return on investment, yeah. And then you add all those things into the overall, and then you go, okay, yeah. I got two dollars in this bar of soap, and I can sell it for you know three. Well, yeah. then you got to decide: is that worth your time to make a dollar a bar or whatever? But yeah. that's up to you. I got it. So. Um, but yeah, so. Um, Larry asked if we make our own lie. No, I do not make our own lie because... We could, but man, that's some sketchy stuff. That's, you know, that's something I really don't want to... Uh, I don't, I don't want to risk my family by making it. You know, and I have... And you can. You can, but there is a place online where I get it really, really Tell inexpensive. Them. Essential Depot, and no, I'm not sponsored not, by them at all. We're not hooked to them. Um, but I have found great deals on the lie there where it's about... Um, it's about $2 a pound. And it's like that. Yeah. Um, and you can make a whole batch of two, two batches with two, one? I can make almost two batches with one. I use just right. a little more than half of it. Um... So, yeah, it's EssentialDepot.com. Um, check that out, you know, and, and do the math. <laughs> like, sometimes they offer free shipping on their lie, but the price goes up. Yeah. You know, look for the stuff that compare is... Compare it to Amazon. Compare, compare it to Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some stuff, um, you know, some of the lie you can get where you pay the shipping and it works out to be a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. So just do, just compare, do the math, you know. Um, but yeah, Butterfly Enterprises, the best place I have found is, um, EssentialDepot.com. Right. Yeah. And, and they're out of Sebring, Florida. Well, and, and for us, here's the big secret guys. The big secret is this, is when we tally everything up with our time and the money and everything, we, we try to just, we honestly try to get 100% markup. That's it. Uh, because our time is worth something and we right. feel like it's important that, we're not sitting there cutting and standing and making all this stuff, mm -hmm. and then you only made a quarter on a bar. That's <coughs> especially when we put all that effort into it. So we feel like we're being fair. Mm -hmm. Like, we feel like this is a good product. It's kind of a frou frou product, but yeah. you're not going to pay like $7 a bar. Yeah. Because we wouldn't do that. We no. just can't do that. No, uh uh. Um, and Peggy Smith, I'm sorry. Yes, we are out of stock on our soap. We are getting ready to make some more this week. So. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe. 
I'm still behind on school, hon. Well, then I'll make some. We've See, had that's a, a lot funny of, thing. We've had a lot of stuff going on the last two weeks, and I've gotten behind. That's the, the funny are, thing. The kids are fine, but, you know. That's the funny thing is, like, I tell her, you don't have to do this. I will go and make the soap. And then she'll be like, no, 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 no. no. And she won't, let, she won't let me do it. No. So. No. Anyway. So. Now. Um, that's soap. Let's compare soap to chickens. But before we move on, let's say, okay, our total investment to make two batches, because the first batch would be like 75 bucks, because you got to buy all the pots and right. all that. Right. Um, the second batch would be vastly cheaper. It would only be like $15. I would say about $100 to make two batches. To make two batches. So that's yeah. 60 bars of soap. So mm -hmm. two batches, you got 100 bucks invested, so you're not in the black yet. But you're close. Mm -hmm. So real close. Yeah. But that's only 100 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. Now talk chickens. What do you need to start in chickens? You need chickens. First thing, you need chickens. Ha, ha, ha. Um, so yeah, buying chicks, that's Feed. the, that's the best, that's, don't buy, don't buy chickens that are already laying. You have no you idea, have what, no you're idea what you're getting. We've, we have, we've gone that route. We've gotten chickens with lice. Oh, we've gotten chickens that, no, don't, Circling don't the drain. buy, don't buy already laying hens in even the free ones. Because if you bring these hens into your existing flock, you have no idea what you're bringing in. Right. So buy chicks. Start with chicks. You can get them cheap. There's tons of hatcheries all over the place. Um, a lot of your local farm stores, they have them. Uh, feed mills, um, you can get them there. That's where we're getting ours this year. Um, I, we're getting a screaming deal. They're a dollar forty per bird. Bird. Per bird for meat birds for the Cornish crosses. So um, you need chicks. Decide how many you're going to do. Make sure you're finding birds that are going to be prolific layers. You don't want broody hens. You if want you're going for if eggs. If you're going to sell eggs on a regular basis, you want prolific layers. Uh, we have Isa Browns, and they lay 300 or more eggs a year. Fantastic layers. Is, is somebody making a funny comment? No, I'm okay. reading all kinds of comments. Okay. So, but, need... I, but I think we need to focus on the cost. Let's talk okay. about what it costs. Okay. Well, sometimes the cost for... Um, What's it cost for a coop? Depends on if you can build it yourself well, that, or not. That's I what mean, we're that's, talking about. We're talking you know, about how to get started. Right. So here we used an existing uh, silo room. It's this room right next to the silos um, that we enclosed and we we got the fencing. The mm -hmm. fencing was, what, 60 some dollars? Yep. The T-post we already had. <clears throat> um but you we know, need a roost and you need a, a, a nesting box you need something to feed them in you need you need something to feed them you need something to water, water them. them okay and you need shavings you need to keep yep, it clean to keep it clean you need nesting boxes i said that oh, i'm sorry I didn't that's that, okay i know sorry it's okay selective hearing sorry <laughs> um yeah and you know you're gonna need a um something to keep your chicks warm in you're gonna need a storage bin or a smaller contained area where they can stay warm a in your chicken lamp. house. A heat lamp. You know, um, yeah, honey hollow. Don't waste your time on chicken wire. It's a no, waste It's a it's waste of money. Garbage. It is complete garbage. It doesn't garbage. keep predators it out. It does not um, get, the, get the welded wire that's the two inch by um, two inch by four inch. But that's pricey. It's Well, that's like 60 some dollars for 100 feet. So... So let's let's pause and tally, okay? okay? Let's say that you could go get some free busted up pallets, mm -hmm. and some of the wood's good, mm -hmm. and then you can craft something out of there to say, get a dozen birds or you know baker's dozen, so that you get like twelve, you know, eggs, ten eggs a day yeah. once they're mature enough. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to be feeding them every day mm -hmm. until they get big enough. Well, then you're still going to feed them anyway. Right. One thing people don't understand, though, is that you can feed chickens for free on things like compost heaps. Yep. You can feed them table scraps. Mm -hmm. People don't forget don't forget that chickens are not herbivores. No, they're omnivores. They're omnivores. They eat bugs. They, they eat, eat meat. meat. Mm -hmm. And they'll eat your table scraps. Yes, they will. 
Um, there's ways that I've seen people that'll take and make, this is going to sound gross, but it is what it is, maggot catchers mm -hmm. where you put rotten meat in a thing and there's a funnel and then the, the, the larvae the are laid and the maggots drop down and then that's free protein for the chickens. So, but, but to, to realistically get started, if you, if you didn't have to pay for the coop, like let's say you just put in some effort mm -hmm. and you didn't have to pay for the nesting boxes, you built them out of scrap or whatever you could find, you're still going to have to build something to feed them with and you're still going to have to buy feed and then you're still going to have to buy the chickens. Right. I'm going to say that if you bought, if you bought 15 birds... That's easy enough. I mean, well, that's like $20. You're going to want to probably buy uh, 20 birds at least. Yeah. Um, because you're going to you have some attrition. Some, you know, yeah. Sorry, Nebo Alley. <laughs> what? The, the maggot comment. <laughs> but yeah, you're going to want, you're going to want a few extra birds. Um, and if you're going to raise them for eggs only, don't get straight run because most of the time you get half of them are roosters and then... Well, pay a so, little bit extra to get the pullets and, you know, you'll have, you'll have some really good hens. So talking about cost, mm -hmm. I would have to say that when you're talking, cause you can't just figure in that you're going to buy chicks and then poof, they're there. You mm -hmm. got to feed them for a long time before they get to six laying months, age. Four to six months before mm -hmm. they start laying. And depending on what time of the year you get them, mm -hmm. that factors in. In, and don't forget, Mama, that when you've got chickens that are layers during the winter or there's less sunlight out, they either lay a lot less mm -hmm. or you have to get a timer and, and you got to get some lights right. to simulate them to lay. Right. They Chickens require 14 to 16 hours of daylight to lay eggs. Um, and if so, if you put on a timer... Uh, that comes on at say five o'clock, shuts off when the sun comes up and then comes back on at when the sun goes down or when it's about an hour before dark, dark, um, and it stays on till like 10 o'clock, then mm -hmm. you've got, you've got chickens laying eggs all winter long. But it, uh, again, it does shorten the life of your chicken. Yeah, it lay. does. Everything's a trade off. Everything is a trade off. So you got to figure out, okay, which birds do I want for longevity? egg laying, mm -hmm. and there's all kinds of stuff to figure that out. But I will say that if you do not have access to free materials, chickens are going to cost you a couple hundred bucks to get into. Yeah, they yeah they will start, but... And that's without considering the feed for six months. Because mm -hmm. a bag of feed is, what, $10, $12? Depends $12? on what you get. The, the stuff that we buy is a 19% layer feed. It's a... Um, it's a Higher protein. It's a crumble no, yep. it's like a powder ish crumble um but it's twelve dollars and fifty cents a bag for a 50 pound bag and that's gonna last 12 15 birds that well that lasts our chickens about a week but we have 22 mm -hmm. and a rooster right so it, it'd be half that mm -hmm. you know about half that yep. so you got to figure i'm going to be doing that for six months, months. Mm -hmm. Before I get a single egg, and then you can only sell 12 eggs for about a dollar if you were at a store. Free range, more money. You can sell, where, depending on where you're at, you can sell them from 2 to $4. But keep in mind, I mean, that's what you got to really think about. Mm -hmm. What's the expense going in? Right. So Now, if you have a, a, a barn on your property or a small shed, you can cut part of that shed in half. And make it into a chicken coop. That way you lower your cost. Right. What we did at our last house is there was this metal shed just sitting there. I'm like, okay, what can we do with this? Well, we turned it into a chicken coop. You bet. We put some 2 by 10s uh, 2 by 4 by 10s yep. um, on the, the, the railing inside there. Um, we did build, as you walk in the shed, we did build a, a wire wall so that the, we could get in and the chickens aren't rushing out the front door. Right. And it was fenced in around the back. We yep. cut a hole through there so that they could get in and out. Actually, we had a doggy door. Yep, it was a doggy door. We had a doggy door, and we just pulled the thing open and shut, and it worked great. Um, so we used what we had, you know, right there on the property. Well, and I'm seeing here, here Honey Hollow Homestead, if you do a tractor or set them uh, set up or let them free range and you save on feed costs, 
Absolutely. Yes. But there's a trade-off in yes. everything you do. Mm -hmm. Like here, if we did free range, somebody's just ringing the dinner bell yeah. every day. Right. And we, we have a place where the chickens can get inside out of the, the sight of birds or predators or anything like that. Right. I mean, if some raccoon gets in there... You're, There's you're, nothing we can do. You're hosed about anyway. Right. But you know, there is there is a there is a trade off. Like he said, yep. you know, if if you let your chickens free range, you're going to lose more birds that way. Yep. So anyway, all in all, I would say to get started in chickens, if you really were thinking, All right, I I've got the, my my chicks mm -hmm. to when I can get them layers, we're looking at three hundred bucks. Yeah. So then you got to decide, all right, if I've only got 12, 15 birds, mm -hmm. they're going to lay about a dozen a day if you pick mm -hmm. the right breed. Well, yep. that might be $3. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 24 bucks a week. It's it's yeah. good as you keep you're looking, going. You're, you're looking at earning about $100 every month. Um, but how much are you spending in feed? But how much are you spending in feed? If you have that many birds, you're probably spending a third of that on yeah. feed. So you got to think of you got to think of the bonuses. What we do here is a lot of our eggs go to our neighbors. We we trade stuff around mm -hmm. for our neighbors, and whatever we have excess of, we take it to our local food pantry. And so. I will say one of the big reasons why we got started in chickens and continue in chickens. Mm -hmm is because of uh, our desire to be as prepared-minded as we can. We're, we're homesteaders, but we're also considering ourselves preppers. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Well, that means that if some weird thing were to happen in society, we are trying to get our family in a situation where it will be the least impact negatively. Yep. And so right now, we've got a rooster and we've got 22 laying hens. We have an incubator. If all of a sudden we couldn't buy meat birds or we couldn't buy right, layers, right. we would let him do his thing and we would just mm -hmm. incubate them as we go. Right. And you want to talk about an affordable way to maintain protein? Mm -hmm. a, a regular egg has about 100 calories. Yep. And that's a lot of protein in there too. Mm -hmm. And so the way I honestly figured was if I had at least one chicken per member of my family and we were feeding them and taking care of them, you'll not starve. Nope. You would not starve. If there was, if all of a sudden there's nothing in the stores, you're, you're not going to starve. It would not be a very fun way of living, but you could have an egg or two mm -hmm. if you had double that right? or triple that. And then what we started figuring out is let's go ahead and barter with people. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you what, we have gotten some great barter deals one of our neighbors is a beekeeper. I'm a beekeeper too, but I have not been able to justify doing it here because I think you lose too many bees over the winter. I'm trying to learn it so yeah. I don't so it's not my incompetence that's costing the bees their lives. Right. We we don't want to we don't want to um we want to be able to take care of the anim the the critter, the creature um to the best of our ability. So we're not going to just jump in whole hog and um and then have a bunch of bees die. So um, Honey Hollow Homestead, if you did not have electricity, how would you incubate? You know what? That's an excellent point that I had not honestly considered. I, I, I saw the comment and I had a thought. The best way to do that is to have a chicken go broody. You honestly. could. Honestly. You could. Um, you know, you could also do, I bet, if you have your wood stove going all of the time, the temperature, oh, what's the temperature need to be at? I want to say it's like between 90 and 100 degrees. I forget because we hadn't done it. We've only, right. we've only done it once. You could you could ha you could could incubate them near your wood stove if you keep your wood stove going all of the time. You would have to rotate those those eggs yep. um, every, I think it's twice a day. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since we've incubated eggs. but um, and, and here's another, just to add to what you're yeah. saying. We actually have solar power backup systems. And a an incubator would take very little power, and mm -hmm. I would I would put it on my solar generator. Yeah, is what I do. Right. Oh yeah, there you go. Butterfly. Hey, Enterprises. butterfly enterprises. Yeah, yeah. Have a solar system for chickens. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. broody a broody hen would be the ideal That's way the, to go. That is the ideal. If you didn't have that electricity. Thank you, Scott. It's ninety nine degrees. I knew it was somewhere around there. Right. But and that was a hard that was a hard temperature to to um to find. 
Yeah, and so uh, just going back, we keep that many chickens not because we eat that many eggs, because we honestly mm -hmm. don't. No. But what we do do is we trade for honey, or we trade for whatever, mm -hmm. or we trade for you know, there's a, there's a million things that and people. What's funny is that people around you know what you have. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we've got some friends down the road that they, they just say, every time I drive by, I just enjoy your donkeys to bits. Oh, yeah. No, that's fantastic. Okay. Quick question. Michigan Daffodil wants to know what we're talking about by broody. What I mean by a chicken going broody is that she wants to lay on her eggs. She wants to hatch those eggs. The chicken kind of switches gears from laying right. to, to nesting. Right. Exactly. To nesting. It's, you know, they kind of, she hangs out there. She keeps those eggs warm. She turns them, you know, and then she'll get up just to eat a little bit. And, and poo and get a drink of water but and then come she right comes back. right back. So she's constantly on those eggs. Um, the chickens we have are not necessarily good broody, he broody hens. Uh, the ones that we've had that were like that were the um, the tan ones. What were those called again? Oh, the um, da -da 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 -da, the, the yeah, reddish, tannish, no, they're like a tan color. Oh, I you know I'm Australorp. No, those were black. Oh. The tan chickens, what are they? I'm My brain has just gone. Excellent, excellent anyway. point, though, Tyler. A broody hen also feeds her brood without the need for chick feed. Yep. That's true. That is true. Yep, that is very true. Um, Brad, yeah. Tina's asking, have you ever done a video on how to set up a small solar panel system? Uh, yes. Check in our, in our playlists. We've got a, a tab for solar. And we've done that, and I've, we've been around the block with solar for so long. We've messed up so many battery banks, and we now know what to do. It's it's been the, like the school of hard knocks kind of thing, trying to figure it yeah. out. But we've got it. Buff Orpingtons. That's it. That's it. Thank, Thank you, Honey you. Hollow. Yeah, it's not a Banty. It's yeah, it's a Buff Orpington. They're great broody hens. They're fantastic. Yep. yep. We had some go broody all the time. That's right. Yeah, which actually drove me crazy because I wanted eggs. Yeah, we didn't want chicks. I don't at want that time. chicks. I want eggs. But the point is, is if you're thinking preparedness, mm -hmm. it would probably be a very good thing to have four or five of those girls around. Yeah, right. You know, that's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> I'm, when we, because we're we we've, we've calculated how long our Isa Browns are going to last, and they generally lay for about two years. Mm -hmm. So we've had them for at all, peak. At peak, right? We've had them for almost two years. They're, well. They were August, so in August they'll Year be, and a half. they'll be, in August they'll be two years old. However, they didn't start laying for another six months. So in this next spring, in about a year, we'll we'll start getting um, we'll get, we'll start getting chicks. We'll we'll probably do a mixture of of chicks next year. So, yeah, but yeah. Okay, so chickens, it's one of those things where you can make some money with it, but mm -hmm. reality is it's not going to be a lot of money. Mm -mm. But it's a better trade. Exactly. It's a better trade by far. Right. Um, and the people that are around you are willing to trade at a good value because they mm -hmm. see how you treat your animals. Yeah. And our, our neighbors and our friends, they know we take care of our birds. They can see them. Oh, they yeah. can see them from the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Here, what's that? You need, to, you need to address that comment right there. Uh, Paul. The lithium-ion batteries. Lithium-ion batteries are expensive, but they have great long-term advantage worth looking to. Paul, you are absolutely correct. Yes. What we have come to, we started out with the deep cycle. He's talking about solar power again. Right. Uh, we started out doing the deep cycle uh, marine battery banks, and we messed them up. We didn't realize that you needed to have the blocking diodes. We didn't. We didn't realize that the cabling had to be a certain thickness and all the math that's involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I finally figured it out and we had a working system that was like kicking butt, then we had to move away from Ohio. Right. And it was like, well, what are we going to do with these 12 batteries that are hooked yeah. together? And so the owner of the house, he was really happy to have that backup. It was but, part of it. But part of the what deal. are we using now? There's a, vid there's a link down below mm -hmm. that we use an all-in-one turnkey system. Yeah. It's a it's box so that's this great. big. And it has your charge controller, it has lithium ion batteries in it, it has everything. And you click lock the solar panels outside, you just click lock click them. them together. Mm -hmm. And it's done. It's done. And I have used that dang thing. 
I, I put it through some torture tests. Yeah. It's called a Kodiak. Yeah. And I've used it with chop saws. I've used it with angle grinders. Mm -hmm. I've used it out on the bus when we didn't have power out there. Mm -hmm. And it's just great. 20 pounds. Anyway, that's it's not what we're really, talking about. It's really easy to carry around. Um, it's only about yay big. It's great to carry around. Yeah. Well, let's... let's anyway, but got, I wanted you we, to, to address okay. that because, because I think that is a great alternative for... Um, Solar. It is. Uh, then you could run a chicken. Buy... You could run a chicken house on nothing. Yeah. With with LED lights. Mm -hmm. I mean, we. If you put together a solar battery system with a couple deep cycle marine batteries, if you're just using LED, you know, you could put something together for like two hundred bucks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, depending on where you get your batteries, because the batteries are the expensive thing. Right. But. I mean, you could get a cheap panel. I mean, we started out with the same thing most everybody does, the Harbor Freight all-in-one kit, the 45-watt kit, and it's garbage. Oh, yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. I don't recommend that you buy it, but it taught us lessons. Mm -hmm. Now, moving on. Okay. Because we've gotten to two things out of, like, uh, ten. Yeah we've, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to, to talk about. But, um, so, okay, so with eggs, right? Most people who have chickens have gardens, which you can take that extra extra produce. You can sell it at a farmer's market. You can also feed it to your to your chickens. They love oh, yeah. all the extra produce. Something oh, yeah. that's not perfect to sell, chickens gobble it up. Yep. But yeah, sell your extra produce. Um, Hold on. One thing. I got to say thank you to Bandana Grandma. Yes. She has been just rocking it Johnny as a Oswald. moderator, mm -hmm. and I am grateful. And I think we need to challenge her to a cook-off. Yeah, I'm saying. I'm saying that I don't think she can handle the power of my lasagna. Ooh. Mic drop. Boom. <laughs> I think that's a double dog there. <laughs> On Thursdays, guys, we do a live cooking event. Mm -hmm. And... Last week? Last? No, it was the week before the, last. The Thursday before mm -hmm. last, we did a bake-off with Living on a Dime channel, mm -hmm. and we soundly won. But um, Actually, we if you go by how many comments there were, we did win by 20. I knew because in my heart. But if we, went, heart, if we went by views, they won. So. Yeah. <laughs> Our cake was better, even though it was their oh. recipe. That cake, I think, is soundly my favorite cake now. Well, it's something new. It was, it, but it was just so good. Well, well, the way that it worked, guys, was we were baking one of their recipes, mm -hmm. and they were baking one of our recipes. Yeah. And we took a lot of care in baking their cake. <laughs> and Tara's over there like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it was but not that bad. You know, the good thing was... It was not that bad. Mike... Doesn't he doesn't like carrot cake, and he really liked that. He kept carrot. eating it. He kept he got up and went and got more. So anyway, so I think we need to challenge Bandana Grandma to some kind of a cook off. He done dropped the gauntlet. <laughs> See, but the question is, do we do an entree or do we do a dessert? I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's talk. We'll talk. All right, let's let's move on, guys. Let's talk. move on to because we got a lot of other things. Oh, I forgot. I set up a whole camera to show you what's going on outside. It's almost dark. Oh, oh, all you see is reflection. And your guitar. Hi. That's us. <laughs> Go back over here. And the jazz music isn't playing. Isn't that great? Fantastic. Okay, other things that you can make money with on a homestead. Guys. Guys. Yeah, genuine Tara. Yeah, she. That, that's how she rolls. Nice. It is. We love Tara and Mike, yeah. so don't think we're busting on them because we're not. No, not at all. It's no. just healthy trash talk. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, now, maple syrup. Maple syrup up here is a staple. It's a huge So thing many here. people make it. Yes. And it's basically, uh, the expense is time, mm -hmm. and the expense is some equipment in mm -hmm. boiling. Yep. Because you get the sap from the trees, you put your tap in, dunk, dunk, dunk. Mm -hmm. There's a bag, or the industrial ones will hook hose systems mm -hmm. together, but you don't need to go that route. No. And then you boil it down, and you sell it for a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot. A lot. You know, it takes, I don't know if you guys know this, but it takes 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. That is a 
huge amount of, yep. of sap. You know, that's why it costs so much. I never understood it until I did a little bit of research on it. I was and we went to that sugar shack with the Go and Batty channel. Yes, we did at that park in, in Cincinnati. In, in Ohio, Cincinnati. just north of Cincinnati, they mm -hmm. have this park. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. But they have a sugar shack, and they show you the exact process of how they make the maple syrup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so you're talking about a one-time investment into making syrup. Mm -hmm. The trees produce it again year after year after year. You just got to learn not to take too much. Right. Or else you'll harm your trees. Well, and the way that it's collected is really fascinating. When the temperatures start to warm up during the day and it gets cool mm -hmm. at night, so when the temperatures warm up, the, sap, the saps and the sugars come up from the roots and go up the tree uh -huh. to feed the tree. While it's still, mm -hmm. you know, February, March, um, or April here. Um, then when but it gets then cold. When it gets cold, it comes back down into the roots so it doesn't freeze in the tree. <clears throat> But that's when you collect. That's when the sap is is flowing because that right. that the sugars sap, the sugars are going up and down. Yep. And, um, so yeah. And so if you could either weld, if you have the ability to weld your own stainless steel tank, mm -hmm. uh, all you need is like a propane burner, and then you can be making you know maple syrup lickety split. Yep. For you know, I, I would say for an okay setup, you'd probably be in three hundred bucks maybe. $400, mm -hmm. and you could be making syrup. Yep. Now another one. Um, well, oh. and, and maple trees aren't the only trees that you can get syrup from. You can make birch syrup from birch trees. Birch you can beer. use the sap from there. So it's not um, it's not just maple. Of course, maple it just tastes so good. A KC Farm. Yeah, Georgia, they don't really have a lot of maple trees like that. No. You, you're, yeah, pine I syrup. Would not, yeah. No, I wouldn't make pine. It no. would taste like gin, I guess. <laughs> Isn't it Scott? No, not Scott. I think it's gin. Oh, yeah, I don't you're know. Right, I'm gin. not very versed. I don't drink that stuff. It's gross. So. Another thing. Uh, on, a, on a small farm or a homestead, mm -hmm. you could easily make pumpkins. Yep. Pumpkins sell for big dollars guys if you have an area you can just set up a pumpkin patch pumpkin patches are mm -hmm. easy yep. you just need to know a few things about which ones to pick to, to pinch off and then you'll get these big pumpkins you can sell for a ton of money yep now another thing and guys share share if you've got ideas share them yeah um another thing that is getting really really big is Airbnb. Oh, it's huge. And if you don't know what that is, it's a bed and breakfast network mm -hmm. yep. where you could have a room in your house that you lease out mm -hmm. or a cabin on your property that you lease out or some unique thing. I've seen people that convert um, silos into apartment, living space. Yeah, apartment areas. And people will come and pay you to stay there. And it's it's uh, it's not something that I would want just because we really like our privacy, mm -hmm. but they make big dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have if you have like um, some acreage and maybe over by a wooded area or something, you could put a little cabin up there. You know, get one of those sheds, insulate it. Yep. And you know that sounds like a big investment, mm -hmm. but when you're talking about making 150 bucks a day. Which that's kind of average. <coughs> yeah. Then okay, a thousand dollar investment doesn't sound so bad now. Right. Right. Well, you keep going, Mama. You go with okay, that. So share ideas. Right. Um, another thing is, in this one, I I giggled at, but when we were in Cincinnati, they had and in Florida, they had these little farms and little farmer stands, and they had petting zoos. And they were. Soccer mom magnets. Oh, my goodness. All these moms would have a play date there. They'd have a picnic. They'd bring all their kids to the playground. Yeah. You know, if you want to open up an area on your land where you could have, you know, have stuff like that, you know, you can chickens and rabbits. Let them run around. Baby goats. Spring is a huge thing. Baby cows. Mm -hmm. Calves. Not baby cows. Anyway, the, the, when we yeah. lived in Cincinnati, it was, or even in Florida, yeah, there was you drive just a little bit out of town, uh -huh. and they had they had a llama, they had what was that big angry bird? 
They had an Ostrich, emu. Ostrich, an emu, that was an what, emu. they had two of them, they were nasty. And they had goats, and they had a play place set up. And the thing about these guys was that um, they had like a play place for kids, and then picnic tables. And moms would go, and they would sit and let their kids just go nuts, have fun, have fun. And then they felt obligated to go pay like way too much for produce. Yeah. And the secret was... This particular place didn't even grow their produce. They they shipped it in. Did they really? They did. Oh, that's horrible. And so all these soccer moms are having a good time. They're chilling out with their friends, letting the kids play with the animals and, and, and having a good time. And then they would go and pay double. They would at a grocery store thinking that it was all fresh produce, but yeah. it wasn't. Right. But if you could grow your own produce, then you're even way better. <laughs> You know, that you know, Louise is right. You probably have to have liability insurance to do that. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, that that probably is. And then you've got advertising fees and, you know, right. washing stations, hand right. washing stations, You'd have things to have all like that. that. You'd, yeah, gator petting. Gator petting zoo. <laughs> no. Well, in Tyler Woods, corn maize labor is labor intensive but makes big profit. Yes. Absolutely. It's a huge one. Way more than selling the corn. We saw one. Way more oh. selling the corn. Shoot, Bang. what did it say? I'm trying to think of what the maze said. It was really interesting. Oh, somebody, they, they spoke, they wrote some words into the maze. So yeah, you can only really see it, it was from like the, Wisconsin-ism the... thing. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. But, yeah, um, back to the eggs for a second. Faith is asking, do we candle the eggs? You can. You can. I don't actually use a candle. I use a flashlight. A bright flashlight a bright, works a lot better. Yeah, candle is not... Um, it's not bright enough to be able to see it. But yeah, a bright flashlight works best. Now, here's another thing that this is, and, and you guys are right. There, there are liability insurance issues that you have to deal with whenever you're talking about this kind of stuff. We're just trying to give you ideas of things we've seen that have made people money. And now here's a really big one. This one is huge, and we kind of talked about it, but I'm going to expand on it. What's that? Christmas trees. Oh, yeah. Christmas trees make a ton of money. If you live where Christmas trees will grow, you can invest in small trees and you let them sit for a few years. And then number one, in Cincinnati, we every year we went out to this place that they grew trees and they'd rotate them. And then we would cut our tree down, you drag it back and then They'd give you hot cocoa and, and then, popcorn. Yeah. And popcorn. It was, fanta- it was great. It was fantastic. It was a great memories, great memories for the kids. They loved it. They and, wish they could yeah. still do that. <laughs> well, we can. Yeah. Well, but now we just go up to the. Yeah. yeah. Right. Anyway, but we paid a pretty penny for those trees mm-hmm. because of the experience. Mm-hmm. Now, another thing that this is this is even bigger. I know that there was a place that two of our kids worked. Claire and Jonathan worked at this place called the Christmas Ranch. Oh my gosh. And what this was, was I think it was a wealthy dentist <laughs> in the area who had like a hundred acres. Something. Yeah. And it was this rolling countryside and you'd go out there and they did the, the amazing Christmas time light mm-hmm. show. Yeah. And it was everywhere. You'd walk through these lights And they did it for years and years and years and years. And then they would sell food and they'd sell toys and they'd sell rides. Ornaments out the wazoo. There was a whole room of just, they had three or four shops of just ornaments. But they only ran it for one month out of the year. Oh my goodness, yes. But they would would open up the day after Thanksgiving and then Christmas Eve was the last day. Done. Done. One month. And I'm told... That them that made them very very comfortable. Yes. Oh yes. They would charge what twenty dollars a car. Yeah. Twenty dollars a car. That wasn't a per person thing. It was per car load. So we got a good deal. <laughs> yeah, we always got a good deal. Because <laughs> we'd load them up in the van. <laughs> yeah. And so there's another way to make money. I'm seeing people giving great great yeah. suggestions. Tina, make and sell homemade jellies. Right. Um, uh, was, Bumblebee Junction, we raise rare breed chickens to see hatching eggs. Perfect. Yeah, that's really you cool. You pick. Yeah. Perfect. You can do a you pick. Yeah, definitely. Sell your extra produce at a farmer's market. Make breads, rolls, Well, you got to be careful with that because I don't know the law on no, that. No, and but I was just going to say, check your uh, local farmer's market. Check their rules and regulations because some of them allow you to bring fresh baked goods. I know the one in, in Medford does. 
So, yeah. um, you know, check check those um, rules and regulations, what is required, that kind of thing. But learn a few different bread recipes and, mm -hmm. you know. I, I want to jump in here, though. Mary, uh, not Mary, sorry, Daisy Taylor is m making me remember a point I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. She's saying not as profitable if you live near the woods. I'm, I'm assuming the Christmas trees. Yeah. And yes, yeah. this is a point I wanted to make with all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And here is my visual example. Yes. This little guy, isn't he cool? <laughs> I like this little guy. He's for He's made of forks and spoons that were picked up as scrap. These were probably less than a nickel. Mm -hmm. And this was created by Prepstetter Bob. Mm -hmm. Prepstetter Bob went and got a bunch of cool stuff like this. And you can, you can hang recipes in it. You know, like a recipe thing, recipe holder. Yep. Or for your phone. And, and he failed miserably with these things because of one reason. Location. 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 And location. Mm -hmm. Three reasons. Yep. The thing is this, is she's making the point that Christmas trees are not going to sell very well if you live near a rural area that has them. Right. Yes. Right. 100% yes. And so what happened was Prepstetter Bob had this really great idea, make these cool little guys, and and people will come and give him five bucks for it or whatever. Right. He didn't sell pretty much any of them because the people he was trying to sell them to are all crafty. Right. And they're all rural. Right. He needs to go to a bigger city and sell them there because then all of the richer people who don't want we'll to pay make 20 these, bucks for this. Pay 20, 20 for it. And yeah. they will think, oh my gosh, isn't that the crazy coolest thing you've ever seen? Right. And I like it. I've yeah. got two of them. I right. like them. They, they're like my little minions. They sit near my speakers. <laughs> and I think they're cool. Yeah. However, if you're near a place that does this kind of thing, has that crafty idea and has more time than money, you're not going to get the money out of it. No. Know where you're at. Location, right. location, location. Right. So, so, let's see. What else we got? Oh, somebody mentioned it earlier. And if you have a lot of property, you could easily rent out a portion of it or a mm -hmm. barn to have people pl uh, like uh, put their boats for safekeeping. Yeah, the store RVs, RV stores, ATVs. Mm -hmm. There's money in that. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. And yeah. then you want to talk about that? This one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can do that. Um, so another thing, knowing your natural resources locally, like if your land sits on a big, huge pot of natural natural gas, um, you can sell it back to the natural gas companies. Or find a company that will give you right. lots of money right. for it. That is if you own the mineral rights. Um, if you don't own the mineral rights, then that really stinks, but yeah. <laughs> but there's other ways you can use your land too. Mm -hmm. You know, you can obviously the easy one is if you got on pasture land, you can rent it to a farmer and they mm -hmm. can grow whatever they want. Right. You can you can basically set your terms. You can say right. no roundup, no this, no that, whatever. Right, right. You can you can you can you know, we have a big pasture over here that we let um last year we leased it to the Don. The Don. And he put his um, steers out there, and in exchange, we gotta, he, yeah. he fed our steers, too. Yeah. So that I think that was a fantastic trade. You know, we, we got our beef a lot cheaper. Yeah. So. so there are a million ways, guys, you can make money with a homestead, farmstead, apartment. Mm -hmm. You can be more productive, and it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. Right, exactly. That's one of the things I really wanted to point out is that you can jump into having your own business with, you know, let's say that it's 50 bucks in, in yarn and a crochet in crochet needles. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could be making and selling stuff. Mm -hmm. The paracord, paracord bracelets cost you a few dollars to get into, right. and the people sell them for anything from Eight. 5 to $10. Yeah, exactly. Um, and our kids love making them. Hope and Grace, they yeah. love doing those. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, my hubby and I barter our land for our land rent for beef instead of cash. Tina, that's great. That's smart. That is a that is a way smart idea to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and there's a million ways you can do it, guys. It's just think outside the box. And I'll say this: one of the reasons why we like doing shows like this mm -hmm. is not only does it build community because we're watching all these comments, and even though we can't comment back to every one of them. 
I'm checking in my mind. I know what Mary's about. I'm seeing what Tyler's about. I understand what Mike DeFazio and his candle making possibly is about. And then you can reach out to people. Mm -hmm. And you can say, hey, well, what about this or what about that? We have, a, we have like a big family homestead store. Mm -hmm. Currently, everything that's there, we make. Yes. It's us. Right. But I kind of want to expand it. Mm -hmm. I want to find people who maybe make candles and say, all right, is there a way that you can make what you need to make? And I make a little bit of money too. And then we spread it out so that everybody can benefit. Right. So we're getting ready. Here's a little secret. We're getting ready to move into Krista's Sasson. We're gonna launch that. Tell them what it is. It's an it's an awesome seasoning. I won't it's Latin. Get, I won't. Yes, it is a uh, Latin flavored seasoning that can be used for many things. Uh, we use it for a taco seasoning, a uh, fajita seasoning. What else? Yeah. Marinade chicken. You know, oh, to make um, yeah. just grilled chicken. Oh, it's so good. But pork. It's, yes, it's on excellent pork. on pork. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of um, different things that we use it for. Mm -hmm. um, so we're getting ready to um, put that together and we will have a salt-free version as well. Because I know a lot of people are, are touchy about the salt. So Tina Weber saying, pick me. I would love to be in your store. Well, reach out to us, Tina. We've got yeah. an email address. You know, yeah. we may not, it may be something we're already working on. We don't know. Reach out. The worst right. thing that we can say is, well, not right now or whatever. We, we try not to be prickly. No, no. But email. It's, yeah. it's, it's in the link description. It's, you know, uh, info at, you know, mm -hmm. Big Family Homestead yeah. thing. So, yeah. oh, yeah, and Phoebe, perfect. Ebooks. Yeah. Ebooks. Yeah, That's reach out to idea. us, Phoebe. Absolutely. That's the thing, you know, our, our cookbook, guys, it's been a humongous blessing for our family. Yeah. Yeah, it took a few months to put it together, and, and you know, there's work involved, and, mm -hmm. and then you find the mistakes you made. Oh, my gosh. We found one today. That is driving me absolutely nuts. But, you know, it's one of those things where you make it once, and then you can bless a lot of people by having it out there. Yep. Just make it affordably priced, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Yeah. Million ways you can make money right. with a homestead, farmstead, right. apartment. Mm -hmm. Just, it's limited to your imagination. I mean, look at this guy. <laughs> Somebody mentioned that these guys would sell great on Etsy. And I bet they would. I bet. I'll bet they would. But that's, once again, going back to who's your crowd? Mm -hmm. Who are you selling to? Yeah. Are you selling to people that would just go, oh, that's just a spoon and a thing, and I'll make it, and it doesn't cost me nothing? Or do you look at, are you trying to sell it to somebody who's like, wow, that's so unique, and I can put my wine bottle on it or whatever that you want I don't know if you could bend it that bottle. way but yeah well okay so are we done talking about i this? think we're finishing up okay you want to so, talk about that no I want, no we already did i might re-mention okay so just to reiterate um the thrive life sale starts tomorrow at 9 a.m mountain time for consultants and then on wednesday april 24th at 9 a.m for everybody else there's huge, huge, huge deals, huge, huge. deals. Um, you know, there's there's loads of stuff that's 50% off, loads of stuff that's uh, 40 and 30% off. Um, they've got a lot of discontinued items that are great for prepping. Um, so check out that. There's a link down below. Check that out. Um, so you don't want to miss out on that. But Thursday... Oh, we our live have, cooking thing. We have our live cooking thing. Um, we're and we're going to be talking to you, Bandana that's Grandma. Right, we're that's coming right. for you, but sister. But not, not for this Thursday. We'll we'll plan further along ahead. You can't handle my lasagna, um, sister. You cannot. Oh, that's, yeah. That is actually a slightly incorrect um, what? What's the problem? email. Your email. Oh, you know, that's not, that's right. That's right. Never mind. Forget it. You can email there or info. Info is better for me just because I check it more, but I'll check yeah. both. Yeah. I'll so, both. But Thursday, we're going to make um, hamburger rolls, homemade hamburger rolls, and uh, Philly cheesesteak sloppy joes. Yep. Those are so yummy, and we haven't had them in a really long time. So. And they're fast. They are fast. Like marsupials. Because they're fast. Because they're fast. Yeah. That's a so, thing. Anyway, anyway. Well, that's it for the night, guys. Yeah. 
Thank you for spending time with us. Yeah. And uh, won't you be my neighbor? My neighbor. <laughs> Think outside the box, guys. Yeah. There's a million ways you can do this. So anyway, have a great night. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye.